Hey, welcome back to learning about Godot. So I had a quick vi update video that I wanted to make, um, or I guess this is a kind of a start of a new mini series, and uh, I'm doing kind of a final project for in our class, and it's it's a um, little bit larger project, but not a massive project like the uh, Adventure World is for a single person. Um, but anyways, one of the first things I had everyone do was make this requirements document. And uh, so I have this requirement document template, and I'm going to scroll through here, and you can kind of make your own if you'd like. Um, but I found this really helpful for getting uh, basically your basic ideas down, and then you have something to work towards when you're making your, your game. So <clears throat> uh, it has your project name, and then a description, just a couple paragraphs kind of describing the project, uh, risk areas, things that you think might be hard. <clears throat> uh, the other thing that I had that I added here is uh, project description and it's in read-only mode and goal. And so the goal was um, well, that's lovely. I'll fix that later. Anyways, uh, and the goal. So the idea is, is you know, why is the player playing this this game? <clears throat> All right, so then risk areas, things you might think might be hard. So <clears throat> if there's something that you haven't done before, that might be a risk area for you. Or if you have done it before, uh, but there's some technical um, challenge to doing it, maybe on the scale that you're doing it on, or you're worried about performance or something like that, uh, that's good things to list here. And the reason I like to list out my risk areas is uh, sometimes those are the best things to tackle first. That way, if you fail at solving them, then you know to to pivot and do uh, find a different way of solving the problem. Also, if you accomplish all your risk areas, then you're on a good path to uh, finish up your project um, without wasting a bunch of time uh, on your risk areas later on. All right. So, anyways, and then finally, I had to draw a few pictures of what the game would look like, and I had an example of a menu and. Uh, one or two while you're playing the game. So that's all there is for this requirements document. Super basic, um, but I think it's super helpful. So here's my requirements document. I'm making a pirate ship manager. So here you get to see my horrible scratchy uh, handwriting. I did this kind of in a hurry, but I think this uh, helps summarize, you know, kind of the idea of what you're looking for here. So, you know, you're uh, trying to find riches and by making choices and I have a couple of the choices here. This may be too much in the details for right here, but uh, you know I've got you know the different types of choices you get to make. And then here's my risk areas. So I know balancing is going to be really hard in a game like this, and I've not really done that too many times. Uh, actually, I've probably never made a game like this before, so balancing may be an issue. Uh, and then making the game not feel flat, and this is more of a visual thing, so uh, I'm not an artist, and so making things be able to pop out and not feel like really flat, especially in a game like this where you don't have graphics moving around, is going to be tough. And then making nice graphics. So uh, anyways, here's my drawings. So on your menu screen, I've got a little skull and crossbones because that's uh, real conventional for, <laughs> for pirates. And you'll have a new game, a continue game, because these games may last a little while. I may or may not add that, and then you've got your exit button. And then during the game, you'll have a picture of your ship. Uh, I thought about making it where the ship actually breaks down over time, but I think it's just going to be static. And then you've got your buttons for your different choices you can make, so whether you're not or you want to repair your ship, go shopping for supplies, or uh, risk going out and exploring. And then finally, there'll be a win state, and there'll probably also be a failure state where your ship sinks or something. All right, so that's my requirements document. I wanted to give you a quick update on where I'm at with this. Uh, visually, this is what it looks like. I don't have the starting menu screen yet, and I don't have any of the successful failure screens. But I was just kind of knocking out some of my technical stuff. So I had my drawing of my ship over here. And what I did for this is um, I went to Google, and I did a Google search for images. And then what I did is I've got a drawing tablet, <clears throat> and I set that image in my background, and then I didn't. I sort of traced it, uh, and I changed some stuff while I was at it, and obviously my drawing's not as good as the one on 
from Google, but you know, it gave me a guideline and helped me get to where I was going quicker. And it also, you know, I I got to draw this from hand, so I got the the satisfaction of of, of that. So, anyways, that's that's how I did this, and that's what a lot of artists do is uh, they use other people's art for inspiration. Um, and whether or not you kind of trace it at that level or not uh, is up to you, but hopefully you can get some inspiration out there uh, by doing that. And then, uh, so I've got my three buttons. I rearranged stuff from what my initial concept was. So here I had the buttons down at the bottom and the log over on the side. But I decided I wanted to be able to see more and that my image didn't need to be quite as prominent. I also needed to list, I don't remember if I showed... Yeah, I don't have a place here. I think I was going to put them over here for the statistics. So that's uh, your inventory and your ship status. Uh, and so I kind of put them right here in between. So really this is the important game information and then this is just sort of a visual over here. So your eyes can kind of stay here uh, and see all the information you need to see in order to play the game. So I've got the, the buttons in place and they don't do anything right now. Uh, but I did add, the, in this text box here, I did add, I set up some fonts, and I set a bunch of spam text to come in here with some colors. And so, uh, if you look at this box, this is a rich text label, and rich text, uh, I'm still getting used to this new interface, rich text has this ability to put this uh, hypertext coding in here, or... Um, text encoding in here and that allows you to color and I think you can style your your fonts a little bit using this. And I figured this would be super useful for um, showing like damage and uh, when you lose things maybe you'll see it in red and when you gain things you'll see it in green so I thought that would be super useful. Also another thing I wanted to test was as text is flowing by I wanted the screen to kind of keep uh, down here and so there's this setting that I found called set scroll follow equals true. So what that does is as it adds text, if you notice here, uh, I just spammed out a bunch of text, but it automatically scrolled down to the bottom. And so this is the last text that was written out to the screen. So I think that would be super useful. So as you're, you know, going and exploring and doing stuff and it can, you know, plop the text in here about what, what happened on your trip, um, the text will automatically scroll for me and I won't have to you know run some code to update that so anyways uh, yeah so my next kind of steps here that I'm planning to do is I need to set up a data structure for this so these are just hard-coded numbers I need to set up a data structure for my uh, ship and then start implementing these buttons so more than likely repair uh, will take a specific amount of um, canvas and lumber and then apply those to your ship status uh, so maybe it requires you know say five lumber and seven canvas or something like that uh, and then it'll give you you know 10 percent ship status or maybe maybe it even uh, does a random amount so you know based on Maybe it always takes 10 lumber and, and 10 canvas, but you get a you know a random amount between 8 and 12 or something of ship status out of it. And so you'll have to <clears throat> repair a few times to get back to, to full status. And then have to decide, you know, since you can't go past 100%, you know, maybe if I'm already at 95%, maybe I leave my ship at 95% instead of wasting the resources to go all the way up to 100 so there'll be some choices there to make. Also the shop will probably be a popover and it'll just list the uh, things you can buy like lumber, canvas, ammo, and crew. And crew would be hiring crew, obviously not buying them. And then ship status, uh, I don't think I'm going to allow you to repair the ship at the shop since that's kind of what you're doing here. So. Uh, your only choice would be to buy lumber and canvas. Oh, also I forgot to add a gold here, so <clears throat> I'll probably add gold as a resource here. And let me show you how these guys work real quick while I'm in here. So again, I'm trying to get used to this new Godot. So this is uh, Godot 3.1. 3 
uh, stable, so it's full release. I went ahead and updated this project. I have had some, uh, I'm not going to say problems updating, but I have had some breaking changes updating my 3.0 projects to 3.1, and some have been sort of annoying to fix, so uh, that's why I'm leaving my other project in Godot 3.1. I mean 3.0, and then uh, any projects going forward, I'm I'm really trying to go to with 3.1 because I do appre uh, appreciate a lot of the the new features. So, anyways, uh, back to this. So, I've got an HBox container here, and then it's got a VBox container within it that lists uh, all these guys. So, what I can do here is just add another label. Actually, I can just duplicate this one. Let's put gold up at the top. So control D to duplicate. I'll move it up right there. And we will call this one gold. Oops, don't need that inner there. And then I need to make sure I add another one here for the gold. Uh, and so you know this could be like 75. I did it again. There we go. Alright, so there we go, that's how this works. I'll probably have to add labels to all these so that I can reference them appropriately, but I uh, was just kind of knocking it out here to start with. And because this H box is uh, absolutely positioned, I kind of just position it out. And then within that, I have these, <clears throat> these things auto, um, kind of auto adjusted based on these H box and V box containers. And so that's pretty much it. I'll uh, keep you updated as I go along. I probably won't do a video on like how to develop this. It'll be more like, you know, showing uh, what I've what I've done along the way. So the next steps is like I said, probably getting the shop and the repair working, and this updating against a data structure. So, all right, look forward to that. I'm hoping to kind of knock this out in probably about three videos. There'll be kind of one kind of midway when the, all this stuff is working, and then one final one when the, the game is completely wrapped up. Alright, thanks for watching. Hope you uh, enjoy this little mini-series, and see you soon.